Hello everyone. I'm Zia Ahmed and today I'm very happy and very thankful to my teacher, my mentor, Mr. Aftab Ahmed Khan, who has joined me in this session to enlighten us about supply chain management. I will start with uh, an introduction of Mr. Aftab Ahmed Khan. Mr. Aftab Ahmed Khan is the executive director of a business research and service institute, Brassi USA. He has two technology degrees to his credit and an MBA. He's certified in supply chain and logistics. He's author of several papers and training programs on supply chain management and related subject. He's coach and mentor to various college and university student groups, former chair of ASUG America's SAP users group, Ontario, Canada chapter. And he's member of Brassi program advisors group USA. So thank you, sir. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you, Zia. And how are you doing today? I'm fine, sir. So, sir, how is the situation in Pennsylvania now about COVID? Oh, COVID, like any other place, it is still a risk and it's a concern. So, of course, the governments and health authorities are monitoring the situation. Hmm. We are being careful and we are continuing with business, but with additional, uh, you know, precautions. Thank you, sir. Okay, sir, to start with, uh, there are so many definitions of supply chain. Can you describe it in your words? You're right. Supply chain, you can find numerous definitions. Uh, I would like to start by telling you what supply chain is not. <laughs> supply chain is not just a set of processes within an organization. Supply chain is not a competitive advantage by itself. Mm -hmm. Supply chain is not just a bunch of companies shipping and receiving products. Yes. There's a misconception that a supply chain is by itself all those things. It is not. Hmm. So what is supply chain? Simply put, and I'm not going to go to detailed definitions, but simply put in my like you, you asked in my own words, supply chain management is the collaborative effort by the participating organizations to deliver value to the end customer or consumer. The emphasis here is on the end customer or consumer and the value delivery. Collaboration, those are the key words. They, they, they constitute the supply chain. It can be a competitive advantage, but you have to tune it. Yes, the supply chain can be competitive advantage if operated properly. Yes, supply chain can lead to profitable growth if managed properly, and yes, the supply chain can be sustainable if it aligns with the environmental objectives. That's what supply chain is. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, sir, uh, uh, let us move forward. So what is operations management and how does uh, you relate it to supply chain management? Thank you so much for the good question because operation management is sometimes mixed with supply chain. There's confused understanding. Let's be clear, so operations management is a part and parcel of supply chain management. Operation management is the, is, the, is the name of activities that you perform in order to add value, uh, like manufacturing, like uh, storage, like transportation. So you add value by changing the form and function of raw materials, producing finished goods, or transporting them, inventorying them close to uh, place of use, all those are operations. So manufacturing, distribution, uh, warehousing, all those are operations. The operations are integral part of supply chain. So the difference between supply chain and operation management is supply chain is where you realize the value. It is the external, external view of, of market. Supply chain is where different companies, different legal entities, they join hands to form a link, link uh, form different Come join the links to become a supply chain. You will start with a farm, farm produce, they bring it to a crushing plant or juice manufacturing plant. From there you go to bottling plant and they go to a transportation distribution uh, facility, then to retail store. All those individual separate legal entities, they join hands to form a supply chain. Each one of them, so that's the supply chain, the external view, that's the value is realized, you sell, you buy, you sell, you buy, you sell. Operations is the activities within each organization. So within farming, you are harvesting and you are crushing and you are bottling. Uh, transportation, you have trucks, you have facilities, you have equipment, then in manufacturing and, and so on and so forth. So operations are 
within the supply chain in each or each entity. So that's how they come, they, they are part and parcel of, of each other. And all, like I said, supply chain management is the coordination between different legal entities, whereas, and they are the revenue centers, whereas uh, operation management is, is cost centers. That's where you are spending money to create value. So value is created in supply chain and, and, op, uh, and operations management, operations areas, and it is realized in supply chain areas. That's the difference. Okay, you, you say, sir, in, in operations management, value is created. 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 And realized in supply chain of, uh, in right. coordination. And, and can we say that the more product becomes, uh, the, uh, the more value is added to the product, the more it becomes profitable for everyone? Exactly. That's great because we, our focus, supply chain's focus, it should be at the final delivery. That's very important to understand that mm -hmm. while each of the legal entities links in supply chain need to make profit, their own profits. However, the difference between a single company, let's assume a situation which is not practical anymore, that a single company harvested the product, uh, owned the farm, owned the crushing plant, owned the bottling plant, owned the transport network, and owned the wholesaler, and owned the retailer. This not, doesn't work anymore, but let's assume that was, a, that was the case. Then that company will be controlling all the profits, right? And they'll have one profit center. But in reality, there are 10 different profit centers. Each company has a, has a profit center, right? Yes. yes. Now, if they lose focus of the end consumer and the competition, then they're not running an efficient supply chain. While making profits, they need to look at where they can save money, reduce waste, so they, because, they, because the cost keeps adding up from, from step to step, stage to stage. Like you said, profitability is the difference between cost and revenue and, and the price. The price is set by the market. It's no more the old uh, world that we can say, this is my cost plus 10% profit, here's my price. No, it works the other way around. You have a market price uh, settled by, um, by competition mainly, and then from there, you have to look at your costs. So you have, your costs have to be so low that it leaves enough margin for you to operate. And that cost should be the focus of all supply chain partners, collaborators, and entities. So they should be able to share information and to the extent that they can minimize costs by being, being more efficient, by being more uh, agile and being more responsive. So the total cost accumulation to the point where the customer buys a product for consumption is competitive and then low price. So okay. that's how yep, the price and cost builds up in the supply chain. So, sir, uh, just very briefly, I want to know, uh, sometimes people use the terminology value chain. So, so value chain is something different from supply chain or is it a part of supply chain? If you look at supply chain, it's a different views. <clears throat> so, for it can have a physical view. Like right? the flow of products. So there are three flows in supply chain. One flow is of information, first of all. Need to know where you're going, the forecasting and the collaboration and the customer demand, inventory. So information flow. Yes. Information. Second flow is the product flow. From raw material to manufacturing to finished goods and to distribution centers through to the uh, retailers. And the third one is the flow of funds. Yes. So look at flow of funds that causes your value chain. And value chain is not just cash flow or, or uh, profit loss uh, accounting. It is at each stage, what kind of value do you add to the product? Again, mm -hmm. by operational activities, by manufacturing, yes, yes. by distribution, by transportation, by bringing too close to the market. So when you uh, keep adding value, and making sure that the value is added to that two values that you identify. One is the value for the business. Any cost that is spent to create value for, for the business, like a warehouse facility, cold chain, refrigerator, uh, transport, transport equipment, uh, pallet trucks, uh, employees cafeteria, health center, buildings, air conditioning, that's all expense 
the customer doesn't see that. But if you do not have that, you can't, you can't, you can't, you cannot operate. That's yeah. business value. Then the greater value is the customer value that when you take raw material, manufacture products out of it, that's what customer will get in their hands. The cookies, the, the cold drink, and they, the, the apparel, the jacket, the shoes, the computer, whatever you use. So if, if any activity, any activity that contributes to business value or customer value is fine, that's great. You can add more efficiencies, you can uh, find uh, improvements. If an activity does not add value, one of these two values, business value or customer value, it is questionable. You need to challenge it, assess it, and remove it. So that's how you create a value chain. Okay, Th thank you, sir. Okay, yeah. sir, uh, every day, everyone is talking about the current global pandemic at the moment. So I just want to know, what is the impact of this global pandemic on supply chain and its practices as a whole? Well, this pandemic or any other catastrophe puts a strain on supply, supply of, of necessary goods to people, be it, um, you know, typhoon or cyclone, but pandemic, COVID pandemic is not a local phenomenon. It, it was it's global, it's universal, and it's very, very far reaching, devastating effect on economies. And you can understand the role of supply chain in society, <clears throat> global supply chain, local supply chains. You could hear the word supply chain from the mouth of politicians, governors, uh, legislators, business leaders, acad academics, everybody. Supply chain should be should be should be managed. Supply chain for vaccine, supply chain for essential goods. Uh, you you could hear words about that's a supply chain jargon, which is lead time, warp speed, right? Speed lead time. So these are all supply chain terminology. So we know that supply chain is so embedded in our daily life today. They cannot separate it from daily life. Supply, supply chain is, if you, I was reading an article in New York Times the other day, it was a great article which talked about supply chain, and the writer, uh, she actually related to, to, she said if, if, if the world was a, like a body, like a human body, supply chain would be the blood vessels. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> Delivering value, delivering life to it, different components. That's mm -hmm. what supply chain is actually. So yeah. you could hear. So, so coming back to to pan, the COVID pandemic, <clears throat> it brought to focus a very important aspect of supply chain, mm -hmm. which is called the base of supply chain. So to explain the concept of base of supply chain, I would put in a simple word that the base, and we related to Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of human needs, right? Yes. We, we read about that. So what's that? The Maslow's hierarchy of human needs is starts from the base, which is the, the exist, existential, exist, existential needs, food, shelter, security, safety, and all that. Then you go to the uh, next level of uh, social interaction, show social needs, then go to the more refined needs, and at to the top, at the apex, where you go to the self-actualization. That's the, the, the top. If you take that model and think about supply chains, the base supply chain is the essential goods, the daily bread, the milk, the internet, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the transportation, uh, your medicines. And then you go to socialization and theaters and you know, fine cosmetics and jewelry and, and uh, all those final things. When you, have, when you have covered all your bases, then you go to the top. So when, when COVID hit, all the activities were closed. Theaters, Broadway closed, um, parties, conferences, they're closed. But what you need more of now, people rush to the stores to secure goods in a panic. So focus was on toilet, tape, toilet paper, on medicines, on food storage, canned food. Hand sanitizers. Sanit hand sanitizers, masks. Yeah. You can imagine that, that's formed the base of, base of, of supply chain. Yes. Now, so that was brought to, to the fore. And then food you still need. 
So the services, the Uber services, which are transporting people on the street for businesses, no business, no people are not going out at, at, at uh, as much as they used to. So the same service switched to delivering food, food yeah. has to be delivered. So see the focus shifted to the base of the, of the pyramid. So that was the message and lesson from COVID-19. And my, if you read my, read my article in, uh, in the Brazil newsletter of uh, March, when, when we are going through the first phases, it, 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 it tells the companies, hey guys, you need to look at your product portfolio. If you are too heavily uh, focused on the top of the pyramid, supply chain pyramid, you may not be able to respond uh, or sustain when these things happen. So balance your portfolio by including products that are used on a daily basis. Like companies suffered, but companies flourished too. What who flourished? Uh, Walmart, line after line, that people just can't get enough. Amazon, right? Online ordering. Yeah. Uber. So see, that, that's the lesson. So look at your portfolio and also be flexible and, and agile to respond quickly, retool your equipment, just like, like those automobile, automobile companies who very quickly, thankfully, retool their equipment to manufacture respirators. Yeah. Right? They had nothing to do with, do with respirators, but since they had the technology, since they had equipment, since they could mold plastics, you can, they can bend metal, they could assemble products. They say, hey, we can, we can come to the rescue. We'll, we'll put all our efforts behind what is needed today, all hands mm -hmm. on the deck, let's do respirators. Yeah. That's how we need to be more agile, and that's the lesson for us to learn from, from COVID-19. Okay. Yeah, I mean, bottom line is, sir, you say that the supply chain is there, but its structure and its uh, focus is changed, switched. Yes, exactly, exactly. Uh, and the way you mentioned about uh, vaccine, so an, another uh, observation comes that once the vaccine is ready from um, a lot of companies, at the moment it's by only two companies. So again, its supply chain will be a challenge how to deliver it all around the world then. Exactly. So you do have you do have infrastructure in place. We do already already vaccines is manufactured and sold. So it is there. However, the volume will be a challenge. How much you, they can uh, sustain, especially because you need cold chain. Already you can yeah. hear about temperature requirements. Yes. And how far can you take the supply chain, cold chain, mm -hmm. how close to the market for such high volume? So you're right. That will be a challenge, and that's what that's what we need to respond is your 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 equipment. Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, just I want to know uh, what are the future in what are the insights for future trends in supply chain? Well, the way supply chain has evolved, <clears throat> excuse me, over the last three, four decades, when when computers came to the shop floor, out from the first applications of computer, which were totally focused on payroll accounting and and, and those kind of things, more powerful languages came. You could do more algorithms. The ERP solutions came to the shop floor, and then more people, more and more people were attracted to this body of knowledge. Uh, supply chain attracts people from different training uh, backgrounds, engineers, economists, business uh, graduates, even uh, IT professionals, many people, people, project management people who bring their uh, <clears throat> uh, different perspective and their different skills to supply chain and strengthening the body of knowledge. So. That trend continues, and that many, many trends, 10, 12 trends that we need to keep an eye on, but three of them are really very important. First of all, service chains will be more prominent, more important in the times to come, like Amazon, for example, oh. like Uber, for example, like uh, Airbnb, for example, where service is more important than the product itself. And, so, and more so because, as you know already that, as economies uh, grow and become more opulent, advanced economies, they have the share of services is, is increased with time, with advancement. It's not because uh, you are using less product. No, we are using even more product. But it is because for making of the products become more efficient. So with less resources, less people, due to automation and efficiency, you, be, you may make more product. Uh, that's why you see cheaper cost and more availability. And then you need the services. To, to service and support and deliver and educate about those, those, those products, right? You need, you need Alex today, Alexa, that, that thing that uh, you, with your electronic equipment in your house, you need to learn that. So there's training involved. You buy a printer, 
needs to download software. So service will be more, continue to be more uh, important, more uh, prominent as supply chains grow. So information supply chain, service supply chain will become more prominent. That's very important. And with that, technology innovation. So how you deliver, use technology to deliver your service and product, that'll become very important. So service uh, sector, economy, and the need for uniform uh, body of knowledge globally. So you ship products across the globe from country to country. Uh, so the methods, processes, they're already becoming very standardized. They need to be more standardized and global training courses, supply chain on supply chain, logistics, distribution, transportation, all those processes need to be more robust and more fully understood. Right now, there's a huge gap in yeah. skill, skill, skill requirements. So that's an option, yes. Okay, sir, talking about the career opportunities in supply chain, uh, what are the career opportunities that now exist in present time and in coming future in supply profession of supply chain? Well, you know, with the growth of the profession, growth of supply chain and uh, global logistics, hmm. definitely you need people to support those activities. You need the trained skills professionals. So supply chain profession has grown geometrically in those past decades to the extent that while used to, we used to see supply chain professionals, managers, and maybe manager, director level people at the top. Now supply chain is so important for companies that you can see C-level CEOs, executives, senior directors, mm -hmm. board directors coming from supply chain area. Mm -hmm. Because then now they realize, they realize the importance of supply chain and it is just lifeblood of, of any business. If you are working, uh, if you are a business that manufactures products, Mm. Your 65 to 70 percent cost mm. on your income statement mm. is operations cost, oh. right? And your profit margin, if you're lucky today, is between eight to 10 percent, right? So if you're running a good supply chain and you manage to save 10 percent of your 70 percent cost expenditure. That's your seven percent of your total portfolio. You're mm. doubling your profit. Mm. The bottom line. So you take the seventy percent chunk of your costs, work okay. hard to improve the efficiency. Like you said, add the value, make a value chain across the supply chain from end to end, from the farm to the kitchen. You save ten percent. The customer gains. You gain. The bottom line. Your profit becomes doubled. Uh -huh. That's the value of supply chain. That's why supply chain is a profession is get so much recognition, so much importance. You can see the entire divisions in supply chain uh, working uh, in conjunction with manufacturing, distribution, logistics, sales forecasting, project management, engineering. They are, they are the most cross-functional uh, process today in, in, the, in the industry. Oh, thank you, thank you, sir. So, sir, uh, who are the most likely candidates for training and careers in supply chain management? Oh, I see, okay. So you know, see, the, the, because of the, uh, the vastness of supply chain management profession and the cross-functional cross -functional nature of this, uh, this uh, body of knowledge, people come from different backgrounds. You can see engineers, MBAs, uh, commerce graduates, business graduates, IT professionals playing different roles in the supply chain. And that's wonderful because everybody brings a different perspective and a fresh set of ideas to supply chain, which is the reason why this body of knowledge has grown so strongly and robustly and has helped companies to prosper and grow, bring costs down, make it more efficient, more agile. So, and of course there are degrees, degree programs and, and, and uh, courses in universities and colleges uh, on supply chain, however, if you don't have a degree in supply chain, it does not mean that you cannot acquire the knowledge. Because those knowledge, that knowledge is, is encapsulated in, 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 a, in compact supply chain training programs put together by, by industry professionals, industry leaders, experts who, who bring uh, industry knowledge, current practices, and the, and the terminology and the standards into a training program. So if people who have done 
my students who have done uh, BS, NMS supply chain, when, we, when we, they go through our supply chain training program, they're amazed at how much there is to learn, how yes. much hands-on and practical knowledge that they need to learn from industry experts and uh, simulation that we pro provide. So to answer your question, uh, the training of supply chain professional and the career is open to a wide range of people who okay. just have a basic education uh, and have some computer skills and have the passion to learn and to support and work in teams and mm. are driven by customer service. So basic thing is passion to learn, that one should be, be having a passion to learn. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, sir, uh, can you just tell us about some of the leading certifications in supply chain management? Yes, uh, there, there are many. There are many at, at different levels, uh, short, long. Of course, you can do major courses. Hmm. However, there are few which stand out, which are established, they're recognized, they're globally accepted. Uh, Syscom is one of them. Yeah. Syscom stands for Certification in Supply Chain and Operation Management. So this is a unique, different uh, program unique in two, two aspects. First of all, it is the only program worldwide mm -hmm. that combines supply chain management and operation management into one single integrated training program. So you are looking at value creation and value realization. It has all the different processes, calculations, algorithms, formula, and also has, like I mentioned before, I think, hands-on computerized simulation to run, hmm. create and run supply chains uh, like, a, like a flight simulator. It's a beautiful program. So that's one thing that it combines operation management and supply chain management in one single program. Secondly, the biggest uh, criterion is, is your program accredited by a third party, hmm. independent third party? Yes, yes. SISCOM is. Is accredited by no other than American National Standard Institute, ANSI. ANS, okay. ANSI, a 100 years old accreditation body based out of Washington, uh, DC, USA. So I don't know of any other program that has been accepted, acknowledged, and accredited by ANSI. This is the only one. So those are two okay. huge. So how much time does it, did it take for you to take this accreditation from ANSI? Well, it is, it is a challenge. It's not easy. That's fine. There are not many. In fact, there are many in other fields, but not in supply chain because it's a very complex uh, process. Uh, it's very grilling. It is, uh, the standards are very high, very strict, and you have to maintain them. It's not just you get them hmm. and then you are there. No, you have to maintain the standards. There is a requirement to continuously uh, upgrade the program and their, their milestone, their assessment, their server lens. So this, you keep the, the keep that you are on, on your toes, actually. Oh, yeah. first of all, you have to get accredited, but then you have to remain, uh, uh, stick to their their standards and, and they, they monitor they, you. They monitor, they audit, they survey, they survey it's ongoing surveillance. It's not a one-time deal, it is, it's ongoing. It's ongoing. So, yeah. uh, just uh, yeah, for, for our knowledge, just tell us, since sir, how long you are uh, running this uh, BRASI and these trainings, this is come, uh -oh. since how long? Brassi as an organization will celebrate its 40th anniversary next year. Oh, good, good. Published in 1981, will become 20, 40 years old oh, next good. year. Mm. And, you know, uh, we'll be celebrating by helping our fellow professional students by offering deep, deep discounts and subsidies and course fees. We want everybody to benefit from it anywhere okay. in the world. It's an online program. You don't need to travel, don't need to you know, spend money, gas on, on the road. Mm -hmm. You can take the program right from your own location, your house, your workplace, and, mm -hmm. and gain the knowledge, gain the certification and, and, and advance your career. So we'll be announcing scholarships and subsidies throughout the year for our students. Okay, okay. So, sir, thank you very much. I am really thankful to you that you gave um, us a lot of time and you gave us... I'd like to... I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you. Yeah, sorry about that. I just want to add one thing. Oh, yeah. The duration of this program is very compact. It's only three months, right? Ah, three months, okay. Three months, 50, 50 hours of, of, uh, of commitment includes okay. uh, the online training resources, hmm. quizzes, printable handbooks, 
instructor-led training, and all those wonderful things, and a final exam and your certification is valid for life. Okay. So that the so your duration is only three months. So you can you can really plan ahead. Sorry about that. So yeah. Oh, no, no, sir. Okay, <laughs> the, I have now one more question. Oh, sure. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> I want to know, uh, uh, Brassi on one hand gives knowledge and education and training. Uh, and do you have some uh, portal, some, uh, some uh, what I will say, some platform where uh, some members who write something or who make something and you uh, give them to you and you launch it and you give it, share it with other members? Absolutely. We have a forum. We have uh, many fora. Actually, one for, for that purpose, to, for, for our students to feature themselves, to promote yeah. themselves in, the, in front of the employers, potential employers, their colleagues, and mark uh, the leadership is mm -hmm. the Brazi newsletter. Brazi newsletter, okay. This monthly publication is read worldwide by professionals, and uh, we are encouraging students to write articles, to, mm -hmm. publish, to publish, and then they can put on the resume. That this, uh, I'm, I'm a published writer, this is my article on this topic, and people love those articles, we get so much uh, feedback, so much likes, so many likes and encouragement. The students mm -hmm. feel very, very empowered and confident when they do something like that. Then we have social media. Of course, we have very strong social media. So we have LinkedIn presence and people write articles and blog posts. Then we also have YouTube channel. So you can create uh, videos and uh, share. So we have a lot of things. So, that sir, what's the name of your YouTube channel? It's Cisco Brassi. Cisco Brassi. Okay, sir. Okay. <laughs> So uh, you can accept the videos from your members. Yes. Yeah, they go through it through a like for 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 a brassy uh, newsletter. They go through the, go to the the editor. We have two editors, mm -hmm. uh, managing editor and editor in chief, and they mm -hmm. they read the article and uh, they just go through the audit. Similarly, mm -hmm. uh, any any submission, uh, it will go through a review process and then will be posted. Okay, sir. This was uh, the training side. So brassy does offer some consultancy side also to the companies. Our our uh, colleagues do not as an organization. Not we do not do consulting as a company, mm -hmm. but our people on the board, like uh, I don't want to name, mention names because mm -hmm. you know uh, privacy reasons. But yes. our many of our colleagues who you can see on the on the Brazil team page on the website, they are consultants. Okay, okay. good. So so thank you very much, sir. That you gave us a lot of time and you gave us a lot of insights. I request you that please spare some time for us in future also, uh, so that we can talk or uh, discuss some topic of supply chain this time. Uh, yeah, it's my pleasure to speak with you uh, always, hmm. to talk to my fellow colleagues, professionals. I'm a student of supply chain. We keep learning. It's a huge body of knowledge. We're hmm. all learners. We just learn from students. We learn from our colleagues uh, and seniors. We learn from you, Zia. Yeah. You wrote written a wonderful book. And we, we use contents from your book in our supply chain course. That's, that's the beauty of this, this course. It, it gets value from all the sources. So I would love to present a specific topic. For example, core chain management. For example, distribution, logistic inventory management. What is safety stock? How do you turn around in a, an EOQ, economic order quantity uh, algorithm or formula, turn it around on its head to use to evaluate uh, use it to evaluate uh, qu quantity discounts. People know, don't know about those things. So I'd love to share that. Yeah, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, sir. Okay. Thanks, sir. Thank you. Bye-bye.